Hello everybody and welcome to Flock Talk. Today we are going to be playing my all-time favorite game, The Shaping Game. So what is The Shaping Game exactly? Well, if you remember, I recently did that tutorial on teaching Newt how to raise his wings up without me ever having to physically touch him. That method of training was called free shaping, which is training an animal to do a behavior without ever physically guiding them or luring them towards your desired end result. The only thing you have to communicate is your clicker and your treats. This style of training is extremely beneficial to use, and not only will it help heighten your clicker timing and communication skills with your training, but it also teaches your bird resilience. And what that means is that if your bird hasn't gotten a treat in a while, instead of them immediately getting bored and frustrated, they will become resilient. They will begin to try new behaviors, figure out why they haven't gotten something, and begin to explore various options. This creates a bird that is not only capable of training for longer durations without reinforcement, but is also exceptionally confident and willing to try over and over and over again, which is extremely helpful if you perhaps struggle to communicate clearly, can't figure out how to clearly set them up to the right direction, and they will begin trying new things instead, and they will go down their list of options of ways they can alter their own behavior to potentially get that treat, making the training process a lot easier and a lot more efficient. So how do we play the shaping game? Well, quite easy. All you're going to need is a clicker. If you don't have one, you can also just use your voice. You can use the word yes or good. It doesn't really matter as long as it is a sound that is very, very consistent and that you can apply at the same volume and the same tone and very, very quickly when needed. And then you will also need some treats and your bird. That's all you really need. Now there's two main ways that you can play this game. The first one is by having a designated behavior in mind. So like I did with Newt and his wings, I wanted those wings to raise, that was my end goal, and I'm going to gradually reward approximations towards that end goal. You could also do this with no end goal in mind and just have your bird in front of you and see what behaviors they're willing to offer. Both ways are extremely fun to do, and I would really encourage you to try them both. You can be surprised as to what sorts of behaviors your bird will actually offer when you just give them the opportunity to try any number of random things and give them reinforcement to see what they come up with. There are all sorts of tricks that you may never have thought possible simply because you weren't sure how to guide them there. Whereas when you set them up just to offer behaviors on their own, you can get an array of crazy things that you never thought you could do before. So we're gonna hop on into it now and see what we can come up with. So the first way I'm gonna play this one is with a goal in mind. So I have a prop in front of me here and I'm gonna see if I can maybe get Toto to pick it up and just hold it. So I'm going to mentally break that down into steps. So what sorts of steps would I need him to take in order to potentially end up picking up that object? So for instance, here I've got him walking towards it. That is a step towards approaching the object and picking it up. There he's immediately gone and pecked it. These are all steps towards him holding it. Picking it up is a very excellent first step and Toto got to this very, very quickly. It's not your turn, buddy. Good. So this is why this is something that heightens your clicker timing skills very well. Because you have to move with your bird in the approximations that they choose to take towards your end goal. Just because I think he's going to spend a lot of time needing to look at the object first doesn't mean he's actually going to spend that much time looking at the object first. I have to be able to move my timing and my anticipation as to what he's about to do with whatever he's actually offering me in that moment. So I thought he was gonna spend a lot of time just looking and staring at the object and needing reinforcement for that, but instead he went straight to grabbing it nice and quickly. And I have to be able to move with him to ensure that our communication is clear and consistent. Good boy. So throughout this process, I'm not gonna be guiding him in any way. I'm not gonna tell him that he's on the right track. I'm not gonna point at it. I'm not gonna wiggle the object. I'm not gonna do anything physically or verbally to that object or to him to encourage him towards the right goal. The entire point of this game is to make sure that we are able to communicate clearly with our clicker and absolutely nothing else. Because if we can't communicate clearly with our clicker, then we're not using it effectively. And that's gonna make all of our training very, very difficult for our bird to understand. 
So if you're new to using a clicker or a marker word like yes or good, the whole point of this is to mark the exact moment that they have done the correct behavior. You're basically thinking of it like taking a picture. As soon as you click it, the bird is taking a mental image of what they were doing when that sound went off. And that's going to be the thing that they remember going forwards and what's going to cause them to repeat. So if your clicker timing is off and you're marking it at the wrong moment, you're going to end up with a bird that doesn't understand why the clicker went off and what they're exactly supposed to be doing. Because what they're doing when your clicker is going off is not necessarily the timing that you wanted it to go off at. So this game here makes a point of critiquing your clicker timing and making it so that way you are doing it at the time that you want to. Because the thing about clickers and your marker words is that you have to be anticipating their next move. If you don't start pressing it until they're already doing it, there's a period of time between when the click happened and when the bird finished the behavior. You kind of need it to already be half pressed down in anticipation so the sound is actually occurring at the same time as the behavior. Good job. Boy. So Toto is getting very good at picking up this object, but my goal was to make him hold onto it a little bit longer. So I have to start shifting my criteria here. Right now my criteria has just been for him to touch it, maybe for him to pick it up. Now I need to make sure that I'm waiting for him to hold it in his beak a little bit longer. And Toto here is a particularly sensitive bird and this game can be a really good way for you to learn a lot of things about your bird. And now in this instance, Toto is a bird where if he stops receiving reinforcement for even one rep, he's gonna probably stop doing everything he was doing. So for him, if he doesn't do exactly what I want him to, I can't just not give him a treat for that round. So instead, what I'm gonna utilize is reward values. And reward values are exactly what they sound like. It's what value a reward holds for your bird. So I have a couple different treats in my pouch here. I have walnuts and I have basic little millet seeds and I have some pellets. Pellets are going to be the least valuable thing to him, meaning that if I were to put all these three things down on the ground and ask him to pick one, he would probably grab the pellets last. Whereas in comparison, the walnut would probably be the snack that he would grab first. So that's going to be my highest value item. And you can figure this out by putting the treats in front of your bird and actually having them do that. Or you can guess if you really want to and you're pretty confident in what your bird likes and dislikes. And so I'm going to utilize those reinforcers to communicate him what he's done really well, what he did kind of okay, and what he didn't do great at all. So in that instance there, my clicker timing was really bad and he barely touched it. So he's only getting a pellet and you'll see him actually kick it out of his mouth. He got something, but he didn't want that. So Toto's getting a little bit tired here. He's walking away. He's not interested in the treats anymore. So I'm going to give him a break and we'll try the same thing with Newt. So I've got the little stick on the ground and we'll see if he can figure out to go and pick it up. Good boy. Now Newt is a bird who's been training for significantly longer than Toto has. So this means that he is a bit more resilient with his training, and that means that he understands how training works a lot better. Which means that when I offer him a low value treat for something like touching instead of picking up, he's gonna key into that and begin to really figure out all the different things he can do to progress and get the higher value treat again. So right now he's just realizing that touching this is getting him snacks. I'm going to give him a walnut for this right now because this is his first time interacting with it. And as we see, if I give him a high value snack for the fact that he picked it up, I'll give him a bigger piece of walnut. He's immediately picking it up and he's holding it in his foot. I'll see if I can get him to turn around so you guys can have a bit of a better angle. Good boy. I'm going to give him a really big snack for that because he decided to put it in his foot. And then because he just picked it up with his beak, I'm going to give him a tiny piece. Good. He held that for a long period of time, which is closer to what I want. So I'm going to give him a lot of snacks or just a really big high value snack. In that instance, he didn't pick it up at all, so I'm going to try not rewarding and see what he offers next time. 
And you see he immediately corrected his own behavior. He said, hey, just throwing it didn't yield any results. I'm going to go back to what I was doing before, which was holding it in his beak and walking with it. That seems to be what's earning him snacks. <clears throat> and we can see him really critically thinking here and going, I threw it. I thought I should have gotten a snack. I didn't. There we go. I'm going to see if I can get him to hold the object in his foot. There we go. <clears throat> I'm going to move myself this way a bit so you guys can hopefully... Yeah, good job. So this is something that Newt offered completely on his own, which is an example of one of those behaviors that you might not have thought would be possible to teach. But when you give the bird the opportunity to explore their own physical capabilities and things that can and cannot earn them reinforcement, you can end up getting all sorts of fun things. And now I have a little noodle boy here who is picking up this object and holding it in his foot. And from here I can have him wait longer and longer periods of time, give him smaller snacks when he's not holding it for quite as long, give him really big snacks when he's holding it super long. Good boy! And we can call this behavior completely done. Good job! And now I have a bird who does hold things in his foot completely of his own volition. Okay, so now we're going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to choose to use a prop again. Woo! I'm going to choose to use a prop again. Make this a fair playing field here. Toto was too tired, so I'm going to kick him out because I know he's not really wanting to participate. Okay, so I have a random prop that Newt has never interacted with before. Just to level the playing field here. So my goal, I'm going to see, yeah, good boy, if Newt is willing to crawl inside the jar. We'll see how deep he's willing to go. But we'll have some fun with it. We'll see what he's willing to offer. He immediately stuck his head inside the jar, so I gave him a huge jackpot of a ton of treats. And we'll see if he does it. Good job again. Good job, buddy. And this time I'm giving him a walnut. So this game, you'll notice I didn't give him a treat for that sticking the head in. Yeah, because he didn't stick it in quite as far. And my idea with that was to see if he would be willing to put his head in further. But on the second round, what he did instead was actually put his head in even less. And that's telling me that he's a little uncertain about what he's doing. He's not too sure about sticking his head in quite yet. And he might be feeling a little pressured to be sticking his head in there because he might be uncomfortable with it. So instead of continuing to wait, for him to stick his head in even further, which could cause him to feel more scared and cause him to feel pushed to do it, I'm going to reward him for the effort, even though it was technically less than what he had offered the first time. And this is just to help keep his motivations up, keep him interested, and you can see that instantly after I gave him that treat, he immediately starts sticking his head back in the dish. So what I can start doing now is going back, lowering the treat value, good boy, and seeing if he's willing to crawl inside that jar. Good. So if he tries something about three times and he doesn't do it further, I'm going to reward him with a low value snack anyways for the effort. If I keep waiting more than that, good boy, then I'm going to end up making him frustrated and upset and he's clearly communicating I'm not comfortable going any further or I'm confused and I don't want him to be confused. So instead of continuing and sitting here and not offering any further communication, I'll meet him where he's at and we'll gradually increase the criteria. Very good! So he stuck his head in super far that time, so I'm going to give him a big mouthful of a bunch of snacks. Good! And I'm going to make sure he gets a high value snack. Good boy! Good. My clicker was quite late on that one. I should have marked it when his head was as far in as it could have gotten. I'm going to move Toto here. Toto! Yeah, you want the knee? That works too. Good boy! 
So that right there is an example of why clickers are really helpful because even though I wasn't able to deliver the treat to him as quickly as I was before, the fact that the click went off at the right time still, yeah, good boy, clearly communicates to him that he did the right thing at that moment, even if the treat was delayed. We're starting to get in there a little further. How far are we willing to go? Good. So again, if he tries something three times and I'm not seeing a major step forward, good boy, then I'll reward him for the effort. Good, good job. So you can see him really think critically about it on that one. He walked in pretty shallow. Good boy, I think your foot jumped on it that time. Good job, good boy. And then we saw him pause there before extending his neck a little further and he's starting to recognize that the deeper he goes the greater the value of the snack. Good boy. If he doesn't go in as far, yeah good boy, but he doesn't, if he doesn't go in as far but he steps a foot on the edge, I'm still going to give him a treat because again that's going to be an uncomfortable thing and he's realizing that the more the feet go in the better the snack. Good job. I might need to brace that jar a bit. Yeah, you're done now? Scared yourself too much? All right, my bad. Toto came back over, so we'll see if he wants to give it a try too. He's probably just gonna wanna eat Newt's crumbs though, I'm sure. So this one's kind of fun because Toto's not paying any attention to that jar right now. He's paying attention to the crumbs on the floor. So I'm going to be rewarding by trying to get his attention off of the food on the floor and onto the jar. So anytime he turns his head in front of it, anytime he looks at it, anytime I think he's kind of getting closer towards interacting with the jar is what I'll reinforce for him. So anytime he's coming close to that front opening, I'll give him a little treat for. And we'll see how long it takes his little noggin to be less interested on the snacks on the floor and more interested in the jar. So what he's going to start realizing is that the snacks on the floor <clears throat> aren't as good and aren't as fun. Good as interacting with that jar. So even though he's not necessarily aware of what's earning him snacks yet, the more this happens, the more he's going to acknowledge that he has control over why the snacks are showing up, and he's going to start isolating why that is. Every time I click, he's taking a mental image of what on earth was happening when that snack showed up, <clears throat> or when that click happened. And we can see he's lost interest in the floor snacks now. He think it has something to do with him looking to the right. I should have clicked there. That was a good one for him almost going for the jar. But I missed that opportunity, so we'll see. He's just coming up to my treat hands instead here. I'll give him a second, see if he can figure it out. Good. Yeah, there we go. So now we've got him touching the jar. So even though he touched the jar last time and got a snack, I'm still just going to reward him quickly because Toto is sensitive to a lack of reinforcement. I don't want to miss out on that opportunity to treat him and then have him get bored and leave us again. Good. Good. So it's a very delicate balancing act of when to wait it out and see if they'll offer more and when to reward anyways. Good job. So he's figured out it's got something to do with the jar now. And we were able to get his attention completely off the snacks on the floor and exclusively onto the jar. Overall, not too bad. So we were able to get Newt to fully go inside the jar just for a very short, brief period of time before he startled himself by making the jar move. Now I know going forwards that I should stabilize that jar in order to prevent that problem in the future. That's something I can correct in my training routine. And this was Toto's first time being introduced to the shaping game. 
and he began to understand how the clicker works quite well. He began to understand that he influences why it occurs. We weren't able to get him inside the jar, but we did get him beginning to understand that engaging with it and disregarding snacks on the floor around him was more valuable, which is a really key part for him to understand in order to be motivated to move his body around and be able to think critically moving forwards in training, which is going to make training a lot easier as he's now going to be, instead of hyper fixating on the snack so much, he's going to be thinking more about what he can do in the moment in order to make the snack happen. And we got Toto not only interacting, but picking up that straw and Newt fully picking up, but I'm not going to fully count that one because he does already know how to pick up objects with his feet. It's just been a while since I asked for it. So a little bit of cheating on that one. The shaping game is always something that you should play with complete freedom in mind. It's way more enjoyable to play if you just give the bird time to think, if you aren't pressuring them into engaging with that activity, if they walk away, you let it be, and over time you'll gradually see them build more of that resilience and that confidence and enjoying that experience. If you notice your bird leaving sessions really, really often, that's a cue for you to say that something about this activity isn't fun for them. Whether what you're asking is stressful, they're getting confused, the rewards aren't good enough, or maybe your timing just isn't clearly communicating what you need and that's becoming frustrating for them. There's all sorts of things that come into play that playing the shaping game can help you sort out and find, which can in turn find those tiny flaws in your regular training that you can correct and be able to have a much happier time training through all of your training programs. Even if you don't end up reaching the end goal you were kind of hoping to get that session, you can always do the same thing on any other day and gradually work towards your end goal just as you would with any other trick or behavior that you would teach with traditional luring. So don't feel pressured to get everything done in one day and remember that every session that you're doing this shaping game is an opportunity for you to learn not only critique your own skills but critique the things that influence your bird's behavior and what you can change to make your training plans more effective. In my case here, I learned that I need to make sure to stabilize that jar so that way it isn't scary and something that's going to cause Newt not to want to engage with it. I learned that Toto is very, very sensitive to his food rewards and if I don't give him a snack for the effort, he will be very quick to leave and wander off. He gets easily frustrated with the activity if he gets confused and if so I need to make sure that when I'm training him I'm utilizing that hierarchy of rewards and ensuring to give him low values for his attempts even if they weren't what I was looking for. All of that is information that I can now use going forwards to perfect our training plans and improve them so that way they are all having fun, they aren't getting frustrated and we can have a smooth enjoyable experience when we are learning other things when we are using traditional luring or any other tactics throughout training. So that will do it for me here today. This is a game that you can not only play with your birds, but you can also play as like a fun party game with your family members or your friends. You can have a chair or an object in the room you want them to touch and just communicate with your clicker. They know as soon as the click goes off that they're in the right direction and they can begin to process and figure out what goal you want them to achieve. This is honestly, it's super, super, super fun. And this has the added benefit of that person being able to give you feedback. Because once you hit the end where either they've gotten frustrated and given up or they've been able to achieve your end goal, they can then tell you what they thought your clicks were queuing at, what they were looking at when they heard the clicks. And that can tell you whether or not your timing was late or on time and what you were actually communicating to them despite what you thought you were communicating to them. So that's gonna do it for me today. I hope you guys have a lot of fun playing this game. I'll have to get my wife down here sometime and play it with her too, just to demo that. It is honestly a lot of fun, um, but that's gonna do it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.